Hi students, am I audible, visible? Hi. Hello. Hi everyone. Good evening. Am I audible and visible to you all? Am I audible and visible to you all? Yes. Do let me know in the chat section. Quick. Hi Aarti, Subhashini, Sranaya. Am I audible and visible to you? So welcome to Unacademy Need English everyone. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today it is the part 2 of biotechnology and its application. Let's try to finish this chapter today. What say guys? What say? Let's try to finish this chapter and after completing it, we are going to practice the questions of this particular chapter on Unacademy platform, right? There will be a free class for all of you and we will practice the last 10 years PYQs of this chapter as well. So let's master the genetics and the biotechnology all together and let's make sure that you, let's ensure your 80 plus marks in the biology in the NEET 2024 examination. What say guys? What say? So everyone quickly hit the like button and if you're new to our channel, you know what you have to do. You just subscribe to our channel quickly. Yes, everyone, quickly. Yes. Ma'am, after this chapter, will you start ecology? Sonia, if you want me to start ecology, definitely I will. Definitely I will. So whatever topic you want to start, do let me know in the comment section, right? And then I'll start the same chapter. And these days, this is what I have noticed. You people are not putting the comments. You are not telling me what do you want. You're not letting me know that uh, the session is good or not. Okay, so you know now feedback is always important. Yes, so keep writing the comments as well. So now let's start the session, students. Let's start the session. And before that, just have a look that what you guys are going to get. So see this students. So till November 14th, okay, you will get the additional off on all the subscription, all the courses of the Unacademy platform. So here you people can see you will get up to 50% off on NEET UG subscription. You are getting extra one month as well. So if you want to join the plus, right? So you will get the subscription for seven months in just 19,000 rupees. And for the iconic as well, again for seven months and the price is half. So what you have to do, even in the description box, there is a link student. So just use this coupon code and be the part of the batches that you want to join right and if you want to join my batch right our batch that is your Avengers 3.0 again this is the coupon code that you have to use so we are providing you everything the test series and uh, the test series as well right students so what you have to do I will share the PDF after the class in the telegram group right so you will get a QR code in that PDF so you can scan that and you can get all the information right students this is what you have to do okay so now let's start the chapter and the name of the chapter is what name of the chapter is the biotechnology and its applications right what is it it is biotechnology and its application so which in the first part what we have completed in the first part we talked about the critical research areas can you tell me about that research areas right right can you tell me about the research areas but Aarti, this week you are going to get the test right i know from uh, last few weeks you are not getting the proper test some technical reasons were there right so we figured out the thing so this week you are going to get the test and for that you can just join our telegram group right where individually that pdf is provided that sheets are provided where your syllabus is given fine where your syllabus is given done bachi okay so biotechnology and its application you know that this is our chapter and in the last class we started with the research areas and we know that there are three main uh, or three critical research areas so in the chapter biotechnology principles and processes we we talk about the technique we talk about the process now here in this chapter we discuss how that process is benefiting right what are we getting from all that things this is the point now when it comes to the research area in the research area what do we consider if we are performing a process obviously we need something right we humans are very selfish okay if we are doing something definitely we need the result out of it so here when you are talking about this research area these are the points right that you should never forget okay these are the points that you should never forget okay the first thing is that this biotechnology is to provide us the best catalyst okay the best catalyst it can be any microorganism like let's say 
if in a microorganism i have added a gene of interest okay so if i am adding a gene of interest how is it going to help me out now here you need the basic understanding of the molecular basis of inheritance so we have the dna dna will form mrna and mrna is going to form the protein that's how a gene expresses itself yes or no students right yes or no you have a dna D, uh, dna is having genes of course that will be forming the mrna and then finally what do we have we will be having the protein that's what we have we will be having the protein nandini that's what we have so basically that's how right that's how the information that's how you can say that a gene is expressing itself are you getting it nandini subhashini athara that's how a gene is expressing itself by making the protein and that's what we need so if i have introduced a gene of interest right gene of interest means this gene is forming a certain protein that we need in a microorganism so definitely we are making that microorganism better isn't it isn't it athera we are making that microorganism better so providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism usually a micro or the pure enzyme right usually a microbe or the pure enzyme then creating optimal conditions now we have that right we have that particular microorganism even the enzyme now we should provide that microorganism the condition in which it can you know flourish or you can say that in which it can express itself that is the second point and after that we have done all the things to get that protein right that to get that protein in which we are interested so of course then downstream processing will be done so you have to remember these three points in a sequence and we have covered it in the last class and in the last class itself student we discuss about the agro chemical based culture organic culture as well genetically engineered crop based culture so right if i talk about your new syllabus as per your new syllabus because strategies for enhancement in food production it is deleted right kevin strategies for right strategies for enhancement in food production this topic is deleted so in that topic we used to have the tissue culturing no remember we study tissue culturing in uh, we have studied tissue culturing in uh, in your strategies for enhancement in food production so now this tissue culturing topic is here in your biotechnology and its application and we have discussed that in detail in the last class clear bache clear bache so are you familiar with that with these terms that what is the totipotency what is the meaning of callus what is the meaning of explant what is the meaning of de differentiation or you can say that differentiation yes if you know about these terms means you have the understanding of the topic tissue culturing okay and you can check my last lecture as well fine bache you can check my last lecture as well done so now come to this part so here what are they talking we are talking about the genetically modified organism as i said that for this particular chapter we are strictly going to follow the ncrt you are not going to get anything beyond ncrt okay so even the plants bacteria fungi and animals in which genes are manipulated in which genes are altered right in which we have done we have done some alteration in their nucleic acid we are going to call them as gmos genetically modified organisms and we used to do this thing for different different purposes let's have a look see it can make the crops more tolerant to the abiotic stress now what is the meaning of that we can introduce such genes in our crops so that we or the farmers they suffer less post harvesting loss let's say if there is right if there is the drought right or you can say that another any abiotic stress means abiotic means non living right any condition can be there sometimes there is excessive rainfall sometimes there is drought sometimes soil is not that fertile right sometimes uh, you can say that insects right insects or the pests they destroy the crop so we can use this biotechnology to make our crops better we can introduce such genes you know which target a particular pest we can introduce such genes that can enhance the food quality of our food right we can introduce such genes that so that our plant can even survive even even 
if the outside conditions are not so favorable so this is what they are telling here right that we can make our crops more tolerant to the abiotic stress like against the cold drought salt and even the heat this point clear yes but this point clear now reduced reliance on chemical pesticides means we can modify the genes in the crops in such a way right in such a way that they don't need any chemical fertilizer or any pesticide right they don't need any pesticide that can you know destroy the pest it is already we can introduce the genes in that crops such so that the pest cannot be able to affect it again the post harvesting losses will be less in that scenario right so here we'll be talking about many example like your bt plants you will be talking about the bt cotton bt brinjal right there are different examples now help to reduce the post harvest losses i told you how will it happen then increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants this prevent early exhaustion of fertility of soil so in my plants and my genetically modified crops if i will introduce the genes that even if in the soil right no doubt nutrients are there soil is fertile but still still that plant can right increase that mineral usage uh, in that plant the mineral usage is better than other plants okay so enhanced nutritional value of food like we have the example of golden rice right and not just the golden rice another examples are also there that we will discuss so if we are putting the genes such genes which are increasing nutritional value but what is the meaning of this thing let's say right but let's say let's say there is a plant okay from this plant from the seeds or from the fruit of this plant if i want more protein content so obviously accordingly i will introduce the gene so that whatever product i'm getting from this plant that should have more protein content it can be any vitamin it can be anything that i need so whenever we talk about the enhanced nutritional value of the food this is the word that we use student that is bio fortification what is the word that we use students it is the bio fortification everyone please repeat this right please type this word in the chat section quickly everyone please type this word in the chat section quick please type this word in the chat section what is it it is bio fortification again it was there in strategies for enhancement in food production but here also it is related what is the meaning of bio fortification bio fortification means we are enhancing the nutritional quality of the food what is the meaning of bio fortification yes bachche nandini subhashini sranaya kaushi athara it means the process of improving the nutritional value of the food so we can introduce the uh, genes which can give us the more vitamins or any specific vitamin or the proteins or the amino acid it can be anything so that is the bio fortification so it is important question can come from this part please note down done bachche so in addition to these usage uh, uses gm has been used to create tailor made plants to supply alternate resources so now these are the examples that we need to study so bachche here in this particular chapter wait so here in this particular chapter i'll tell you the important important or you can say that the most important topics okay yes so i'll tell you what i'll tell you the most important topics see here from this chapter you should know about the bt cotton part okay we need to discuss about the rna i that is rna interference clear bachche the insulin example is given here in this chapter that we need to discuss and one example is also of the agrobacterium although we have covered it in the last chapter still we will repeat it so these are you know few examples so one example is of bt cotton the rna interference the insulin related example or the agrobacterium clear bachche or the agrobacterium so we will follow the flow of the ncert do worry about that so the this chapter will strictly be on the basis of ncert clear bachche it will be strictly on the basis of ncert so let's start with the genetic transformation in plants right how are we uh, so let's start with what let's start with the genetic transformation right genetic transformation in plants so we'll start with the example of the 
Agrobacterium. And yes, one more important topic. Gene therapy. That is also very important. Okay, that also we need to discuss. So, let's start with the example of what? Let's start with the example of Agrobacterium tumefacin. But you see, Agrobacterium is having another species also, but here, strictly we are talking about what? We are talking about the Agrobacterium tumefacins. And it is the natural genetic engineer, bache, right? It is the, this Agrobacterium tumefacin is what? Natural, it is the natural genetic, it is the natural genetic engineer, bache. It is the soil born bacteria. What is it? It's a soil born bacteria. It used to infect the dicots. Clear, bache? It used to infect the dicots, not the monocots, but the dicots. Again, an important question. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So, it infects the all broad leaved dicots, like you can take the example of soya bean as well. Now, here in this particular bacteria, that is your agrobacterium tumefacin, again, I am repeating this. So, this bacteria is having a plasmid. So, I, I, I assume that you know about the plasmid now and if you don't please do check the do check the recorded sessions of the uh, biotechnology and its uh, uh, and its processes so see this is the bacteria that we have yes bacho this is the bacteria that we have so now here in this particular bacteria what is the point so just look at this it is that circular dna right it is that circular dna here you have what? Here you have the plasmid. Actually, which is this plasmid is the TI plasmid. TI plasmid means it is tumor inducing plasmid. Which plasmid it is? It is the tumor inducing plasmid. Right, which here in this particular plasmid, this part, this part that I'm highlighting, it is the TDNA. Actually, which is this bacteria, it can infect the dicots, right? It is infecting the dicots. So it is having a particular mechanism. How? How that bacterium is going to infect the dicots? Right. First of all, this is what you need to understand. Clear, bache? This is what you need to understand. Right, bache? Right, right, right. So, basically what is happening here? What is happening? This bacterium, right? When it came in the contact with the plant cell, with the normal plant cell, right? When it came in contact with the normal plant cell, then what is happening? It is a transferring its right tdna it is transferring its tdna of the plasmid right this plasmid is known as ti plasmid what is the meaning of ti it's tumor inducing plasmid so normally this bacteria when it came in contact with the, that particular dicot plant it is going to pass its tdna to that dicot plant clear bache to that dicot plant and then what is happening the normal cell of that Right, the normal cell of that dicot plant will also become cancerous or you can say that it will start dividing, it will start forming that tumor. So, this is a natural property of this particular bacterium. Now, scientists, they have exploited this ability of this bacterium, right? That's how they are doing the genetic transformation in plant. Let me tell you how, right? Let me tell you how. So, see, see, bache, see, this part, this part, TDNA, actually this bacterium is passing its tdna to the host cell and host cell is getting transformed now what if i will remove this tdna bacteria is having a natural ability like let's say you are trained to do something right you know how to supply some material right let's say initially you were supplying some bad things okay and then i told you that uh, uh, you have this ability you know how to trans how to you know uh, transform or how to transfer this thing to that place so stop doing the bad deed right instead of that use your ability for doing something good and now use your ability for doing something good same is the case here right same is the case here so when you are talking about the tdna if let's say tdna is removed from this bacterium and instead of tdna i'm introducing my gene of interest right if i'm introducing my gene of interest then what is going to happen bacteria is having the ability bacteria will transfer that gene of interest the way it was transferring its tdna so in that way we can use this agrobacterium tumefacin we can make it uh, harmless we can introduce here 
our own gene of interest and we can use the ability of this agrobacterium tumefacin to transfer my gene of interest into that dicot plant getting my point into that dicot plant are you getting my point right and when you talk about this tdna it is having you know the recognition this dna sequence is having the recognition sites or the uh, or you can say that restriction sites for the restriction endonucleases we can use that particular restriction endonuclease and we can introduce our gene of interest so that's your homework subhashini right bachche kevin that's your homework you guys are going to tell me the that which restriction sites are present here right that's your homework you are going to tell me that which restriction sites are present here okay okay done okay done so that's how the genetic transformation will occur this part clear that is how the genetic transformation will occur right that is how this agrobacterium tumefacin a natural engineer is used for this fine bache so now let's move to the next part that is your bacillus thuring thuringiensis do you know about this bacteria bacillus thuring genesis so bacillus means rod shaped bacteria bacillus means rod shaped bacteria now when you talk about this particular bacteria bache this bacteria is having certain genes i'm not taking the name of any gene as of now and that genes they form certain insecticidal proteins that genes they form what they form certain insecticidal proteins what is the mean what is the meaning of insecticidal proteins what is the meaning of just a minute Done, bache. So, what is the point? So, Bacillus therin genesis, Bacillus therin genesis, rod shaped bacteria, right? Bache. So, it is having the genes, and that genes form certain insecticidal protein. What is the meaning of insecticidal protein? That can kill, right? That can kill insects. Fine, bache. That can kill insects. Now, the question here is that if this particular bacteria is having the genes that can kill insect, so that toxin is not affecting this particular bacteria. So the answer here is, bache, that these genes they are going to form inactive toxins. What type of toxins will be formed by this gene? They are inactive toxins, and for that we use the word prototoxin. right we use the word prototoxins so these prototoxins they will only be activated when they will enter in the body of that particular insect pest got it right when they will enter in the body of that particular insect pest then only they will be active otherwise they are what they are the inactive toxins the prototoxin fine so bacillus therin genesis and even bachche you know uh, the in the market the sachet of uh, the spores of bacillus therin genesis are also available subhashini do you know that in the market the sachet of the spores of bacillus therin genesis they are also available so we can mix it in water we can spray it over the crop field and it can destroy the larvae the larvic the caterpillars the caterpillars basically okay right it can destroy the caterpillars okay so we are talking about what we are talking about the bacillus therin genesis and i told you that it is having the genes that can destroy many insect pests but but yes not just the insects only other organisms also it can target like uh, i have studied it once that it is also having certain genes which can you know uh, kill certain nematodes as well but in your syllabus they have given you the example of the insecticidal protein so this is what we are going to discuss okay so we'll be taking the example of a cry gene which gene are we going to consider bachche cry gene so whenever you are writing the gene right even if you have noticed it it should be written in the small letters and in italics 
what am i talking i'm talking about the gene what am i talking i'm talking about the gene what is the name of the gene cry gene what is the name of the gene it is cry gene so this cry gene we have to write it in italics right right bachche and in small letters and it will make protein where c will be where you will write the first alphabet as capital right where what are we going to do we are going to write the first alphabet as capitals so cry gene will form the cry protein which is insecticide clear so we have the examples from where the question is going to come so let's have a look okay let's have a look so see this right so bt toxin bt toxin bt here is bacillus theurin genesis it is produced by bacterium called bacillus theurin genesis so bt toxin gene has been cloned from the bacteria and it is expressed in plants to provide resistance against the insects so whenever you are saying bt cotton bt corn bt rice tomato potato means that plants are having the gene or the protein from that particular bacterium and it is insecticidal plant clear bachche it is insecticidal plant clear bachche yes or no is it clear is it clear so remember this bt bt bacillus theurin genesis these bt plants right don't you think that it is a pesticide it's a natural pesticide so it is bio pesticide or the insecticide whatever you want to say right right tell me bio pesticide na it is a bio pesticide because we are extracting that product from a living organism it is it is going to kill another pest right another pest and basically a living organism is helping in the in destroying the another living organism so it's the bio pesticide and it is going to be environmental uh, it is environmental friendly done bachche kevin it is environmental friendly done bachche so it is what it is the bt toxin right bachche so see some strains please mark it please please highlight this part in your ncrt you will definitely get question from this particular part right definitely you are going to get question from this particular part so some strains of bacillus theurin genesis they produce proteins that will kill certain insects such as lepidopterans what is the lepidopteran bachche this is the order you know that that's how we discuss na kingdom is animalia phylum is arthropoda class is insecta so that class is having different orders so when you are saying lepidopterans you are talking about an order right of the class insecta so basically we are saying that bacillus theurin genesis is going to produce the proteins that will kill the insects such as lepidopterans bachche and that include tobacco budworm army worm so examples are also important here understood examples are also important here here then coleopterans where it includes your beetles okay so this particular bacteria is having a genes that can destroy these bud worms army worms plus the beetles and dipterans as well that will include flies and mosquitoes right that will include flies and mosquitoes so uh, so this part is important fine this part is important so this bacillus theurin genesis it will produce protein crystal right during a particular phase of their growth and that is toxic insecticidal protein and because it is formed in inactive state right so it is a prototoxin but once an insect ingest the inactive toxin it is converted into the active form are you getting it i'll explain you the procedure in detail chalo i'll start with that so now let's say any insect larva let's say you are having a caterpillar okay theek hai you are having a caterpillar let's say here you are having a bt plant i'm giving you one example bt plant means what is the meaning of a bt plant that it is having that particular gene that can kill a particular insect now when this larva will try to ingest the leaves here these leaves are having the gene and that gene will form the protein that protein is what that is a toxin but what type of toxin it is it is a prototoxin means inactivated form of toxin so when this caterpillar when this caterpillar will ingest that prototoxin so now here in the mid gut epithelium okay so basically here in the gut what is going to happen in the gut here the ph is alkaline 
right in our case you know na in the stomach we talk about the acidic ph but here the ph is what it is alkaline it is the basic ph so this toxin when it will be ingested by this caterpillar so what is going to happen here bachche this toxin will solubilize yes or no this toxin will solubilize yes or no and what type of ph is there alkaline ph is there right and because of that alkaline ph it will get active so this prototoxin will now be the active toxin right and this active toxin is going to create the pores in the mid gut epithelium of this particular larvae right what will it do it is going to it is going to create the pores here in the cells right here in the cells so imagine if pores are created don't you think that water from the surrounding the fluid from the surrounding will come in right the fluid from the surrounding will come in and when the fluid from the surrounding surrounding will come in it will it will just burst that particular cell are you getting my point are you getting my point so bt toxin protein which is existing as inactive prototoxin but once it is ingested bachche once it is ingested right it is converted into the active form why because of the alkaline ph of the gut so another important mcq fine bachche it is another important mcq understood understood so it is which solubilizes the crystal so activated toxin binds to the surface of mid gut epithelium create the pores that will cause the swell swelling a uh, cell swelling and lysis and eventually death of the insect so actually this insect is going to die because of starvation because of hunger because obviously the gut is having the pores right right so that's how this particular larva will die fine bachche right so here we have the examples of certain uh, you know genes that we have to remember like see the name of the genus cry so see one genus cry one ac right cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab you need to remember that cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab please write down dan bachche so this cry 1 ac what will it do it will control the cotton wall bombs okay and when you are talking about the cry sorry cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab right cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab these are the these are the genes that we have bachche cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab these are the genes that we have so cry 1 ab will control the corn borer bachche cry 1 ab will control the corn borer and cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab they both are going to control the they both are going to control the cotton wall worms and this one will be the corn borer right so oh oh my mistake let me write it properly so cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab cotton wall worm and this cry 1 ab will go for what for the corn borer so this is what you need to remember important it is fine bache it is important done it is important okay done so that is important so see so a is showing the cotton ball which is destroyed by the wall worms and b is showing the fully mature cotton ball okay so this is that's how this uh, bt cotton will stay protected from that pests that are going to destroy it fine that are going to destroy it any doubt here this example is important this part is important so next is the pest resistant plant where we need to understand the rna interference okay next is the pest resistant plant where we need to understand what right we need to understand the rna interference and this rna interference is also known as rna i so do you know anything about the rna interference yes do you know anything about the rna interference yes bachche so we are going to talk about the pest resistant plant actually but 
बिफोर दैट आई गिव यू द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द आर एन ए इंटरफेरेंस सी बच्चे इट्स वेरी सिंपल आर एन ए आई आर एन ए इंटरफेरेंस इन जनरल यू नो दैट वॉट इज हैपनिंग द डी एन ए इज फॉर्मिंग द एम आर एन ए एंड दैट एम आर एन ए इज फॉर्मिंग द प्रोटीन इज इंड इट डी एन ए इज फॉर्मिंग द एम आर एन ए एंड दैट एम आर एन ए इज फॉर्मिंग द प्रोटीन दैट्स वॉट वी हैव राइट दिस इज द फ्लो ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन स्टूडेंट डी एन ए टू एम आर एन ए लेट्स रिपीटेड अगेन ट्रांसक्रिप्शन एम आर एन ए टू प्रोटीन वॉट इज इट इट इज द ट्रांसलेशन सो बेसिकली दिस एम आर एन ए basically this mrna it is required for the translation to form the protein let's say if i will not let this rna right let's say if this is my target mrna okay this is my target mrna and if i will not allow this mrna to tra to translate so will i get this protein yes or no so will i get this protein yes or no tell me quickly tell me quickly so what if i will target the mrna right what if i will target the mrna right if i will target the mrna of course i know that if i will not let this mrna to translate into a protein right if i will not let this mrna to translate into a protein obviously i'm not going to get this protein and in rna interference that's what we study so we will be having a target mrna and we will not let that mrna to form the protein this is the in general meaning of that rna interference clear bachche this is in general meaning of that rna interference that what is happening here bachche we are not letting this target mrna to form the protein and for that we need a double stranded rna that will be forming our si rna what is this si rna i will tell you the process in detail it is your small interfering rna it is your small interfering rna clear bachche what is it it is your small interfering rna so these are the things we need to understand here clear bachche these are the things that we need to understand here done done so should we start yes bachche should we start okay so here mm okay so we are discussing this under this topic pet resistant plant okay under this topic we are studying this particular process of rna interference so what is happening students uh yes pest resistant plant so basically we are going to take the example of the tobacco plant right we will be taking the example of what we will be taking the example of the tobacco plant now case of a nematode nematode do you know do you understand the nematode word yes what is a nematode tell me what is a nematode what do you know what do you understand from this word nematode anyone here what do you understand from the word nematode remember bachche kingdom animalia in kingdom animalia we talk about the different phylums we start with the porifera cnidaria cnophora platyhelminths and askelminths so platyhelminths they are the flat worms askelminths they are the round worms so that askelminth that round worm right that askelminth that round worm they are basically the nematodes what are they they are basically the nematodes that's what you need to remember okay so tobacco plant its yield is in uh, decreasing why because of the nematode what is the name of nematode that is melody gyni you should remember the name bachche incognitia melody gyni incognitia so this nematode it is affecting the yield of the tobacco plant it is reducing the yield of the tobacco plant and how is it, it how is it doing it it is infecting the roots of that right right so this nematode it infects the roots it infects the roots of the tobacco plant right of the tobacco plant right so here i'll give you one example let's say this is a particular nematode just take the example it is affecting the roots 
how how that uh, how that nematode can infect the roots tell me how that nematode can infect the root what that nematode will do obviously this nematode is making a kind of protein no hai na it is making a certain protein and that protein is infecting the root let's say here you are having just take any simple example here you are having a plant okay here you are having a plant your nematode is going to this plant your nematode is decreasing the yield of tobacco plant by infecting its root so how that nematode can do that how that nematode is going to do that obviously it will be forming certain proteins hai na when this nematode it is infecting the roots right it must insert some proteins there and that proteins are destroying so what if i will stop this protein to form what if i'll stop this protein to form what if this plant this tobacco plant is my transgenic tobacco plant right what is it it is my transgenic tobacco plant what is it students please repeat it is my transgenic tobacco plant what is the meaning of transgenic tobacco plant that this tobacco plant is having a foreign gene foreign gene means it is having a gene from some another species okay so this transgenic tobacco plant this genetically modified tobacco plant let's say it is not getting affected with this nematode why because this tobacco plant is having a mechanism it is not allowing that particular protein right that particular protein of that nematode to form so nematode is not capable of destroying the roots here right is it possible or not yes subhashini nandini athara is it possible or not of course it is of course it is so how this transgenic tobacco plant is protecting itself this transgenic tobacco plant is protecting itself with the help of this rna interference with the help of this rna i now now let's understand the rna i RNAi is a cellular defense mechanism in the case of eukaryotes right when you are talking about the RNAi it is a cellular defense mechanism and it is present in right it is present in eukaryotic cells fine it is present in eukaryotic cells fine bachche now what is happening here in this particular process for this we need a double stranded rna usually the rna is single stranded but we need the double stranded rna and how that can be done let's say this is the this is a cell right because it is a protective mechanism in the case of eukaryotic cells so here you have the nucleus right here you have the nucleus and transcription will occur here in the nucleus am i right the transcription will occur in the nucleus so basically bachche let's say let's say this is the dna and this is my target mrna so for rna interference obviously if i'm going to perform this technique or if a, it is a cellular defense mechanism so obviously obviously when you are talking about this particular mrna right you know the sequences here isn't it nandini isn't it nandini you know the sequence here right like you know that gene sequence which is forming this particular mrna is that clear or not is that clear or not if not i will explain it again do let me know i know in the topic of rna interference many times you find it difficult to understand it so just tell me so just tell me so is it clear so basically rna i need to i need to do what i need to destroy a targeted mrna right i need to destroy a targeted mrna here so if i need to destroy right the targeted mrna here okay so i should know na which mrna i'm uh, i'm going to target yes nandini i should know na the mrna that i'm going to target yes or no yes or no so basically basically this is my mrna so with the help of certain you know external agents what will i do complementary to this mrna i am going to introduce another genes or you can say that the double stranded rna right complementary to it i will introduce 
a double stranded RNA or the gene here. Right? Double stranded RNA or the gene here. Bache. Are you getting it? I will tell you how will it be done. So basically long double stranded DNA, right? Basically here in this process, externally a gene which is forming the mRNA complementary to our target mRNA, it is introduced for introducing that gene. Okay, for introducing that gene, we can use any other external agent and sometimes, right, the jumping genes, okay, the jumping genes of the eukaryotic cells DNA, sometimes they form the double stranded RNA. Right, sometimes they form the double stranded RNA. First of all, understand the mechanism, then we will discuss it in detail. Okay, okay, yes or no? Yes or no? So, basically, we have to introduce here a double stranded RNA, and for that, I told you externally also you can use certain agents. Let's say you are using a viral genome. You are using what? You are using a viral genome. And you are using that viral genome to introduce a special gene which is having the uh, which which will form the RNA complementary to this mRNA. Is it clear or not? Tell me, is it clear or not? So as I said, we can use the viral genome externally also, and sometimes here the jumping genes, the transposons present here in this eukaryotic cell, they can also solve our purpose. Clear, bache? They can also solve our purpose. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? Right? So, source of this complementary RNA, it can be anything. It can be infection by virus having RNA genomes or it can be any mobile genetic element. Okay? It can be any mobile. Mobile means movable genetic element that is known as transposons. Fine. That is known as transposons. Understood? So, in general, what happened? In general, you know that when you are talking about a gene, it will form single stranded mRNA. Right? But here in this case, it will do what? It forms single stranded mRNA. Why? Why, Bache Nandini? Why is it so? Because you know that when it is the transcription, right? When it is the transcription, so you have two strands so one acts like a template right one strand acts like a template having polarity three prime to five prime uh -oh. remember remember so in the dna you can have a look of this dna so this dna right it is having one template strand having polarity 3 prime to 5 prime and another strand is having polarity 5 prime to 3 prime and it is the coding strand. Fine, it is the coding strand. So, you know that normally in transcription what is going to happen only this strand will get transcribed and it will form the mRNA. But here when it is the RNA interference that introduced gene having the RNA complementary to our targeted mRNA, here both the strands will get transcribed. So, if both the strands here will get transcribed, so obviously these two single single mRNAs, right, they are also complementary to each other, they can join with each other and they can also form the double stranded RNA, am I right or wrong? They can form the double stranded RNA in the eukaryotic cell, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Tell me quickly. Sure? Are you sure? So now there will be the role of another enzyme. That enzyme is known as dicer. Dicer is bache RNAs. What is the meaning of RNAs? The enzyme which is going to cleave the RNA. Right? It is RNAs. It is it is an endonuclease. Clear bache? It is an endonuclease. So dicer is an enzyme which is going to, right? Dicer is an RNA. It is an endonuclease students. So, this dicer enzyme will, will break this double stranded RNA into small, small fragments. This part clear? So, first of all, what do we need? 
This RNA interference is a cellular defense mechanism in the case of the eukaryotic cell. So here, right, whatever is our target mRNA, we need the RNA complementary to that target mRNA. So sometimes we introduce the gene externally. We can use viral genome for that. And we can also go for the mobile genetic elements that are the transposons. Okay, so when that gene is introduced there, so when that gene will transcribe, it will not form just single stranded mRNA. The way we study normally, right, the way we study normally, Yes or no, Gayatri? The way we study normally that in transcription there is a template strand, only that template strand will be transcribed and another is the coding strand, right? So both the strands, both the strands here, right? What is going to happen in RNA interference? Both the strands will be transcribed, both the strands will be transcribed and these single single strands they will bind with each other, right Bachi? And they will form the double stranded RNA. Now that double stranded RNA will be cleaved with the help of enzyme dicer. Dicer is going to break it into small, small fragments. Understood? Dicer is going to break it into, yes students, small, small fragments. Done Bachi? Done Bachi? Yes. So now these small, Right, these small, small double stranded fragments, do you know that they are siRNAs, means they are small interfering RNAs. What are they? They are small interfering RNAs. Is that clear? What are they students? They are small interfering RNA. Now, you will see one another complex here that is risk. RISSC that is RNA induced silencing complex that is RNA induced silencing complex risk these are two terms that you need to remember individually they can also ask about the dicer so dicer is what it is RNAs the enzyme which is going to digest the RNA and it is an endonuclease it is an endonuclease understood Right. So now these small interfering RNAs, they will pass through the risk. Risk means RNA induced silencing complex. So when these small interfering RNAs, when they will pass through this risk, again, it is also a protein, right? A kind of group of protein. So they will, they will make this, right? Double stranded RNA into the single stranded RNA. Right, it is going to break this double stranded RNA into single stranded RNA. Basically, unbinding of the duplex will occur here. Right, Bachi? Unbinding of the duplex will occur here. Now, this single stranded RNA, right, it is complementary to our target mRNA. It is complementary to our target mRNA. Like, let's say here, this is a cell that we have in the nucleus transcription is going on because it is in the eukaryotic cell. So, this is your target mRNA, right? This is your target mRNA. So, you know that what target mRNA will do. Target mRNA from nuclear pore complex after the RNA processing, it will come to the cytoplasm for the translation. I hope you know about it, right? It will come to the cytoplasm for the translation. But here what is going to happen students, this target mRNA will not be available for translation. Why? Because that small interfering RNA will bind to it and will destroy it. Okay, this is the RNA interference. Clear, Bache? This is the RNA interference. And this mechanism is used for making the transgenic tobacco plant so that it can get protected from the nematode melodigyne incognitia. Okay, so remember when this, okay, when this pathogen will try to infect the roots when this pathogen will try to infect the roots of that tobacco plant, what is going to happen? Basically, it will introduce a protein or it, it is having the gene. When it is trying to invade that tobacco plant, it is having the gene that will form the protein that will infect the roots. But because it is transgenic tobacco plant, so we know that nematode specific genes. So we will introduce that nematode specific genes into the tobacco plant so that it can form double stranded RNA and that double stranded RNA can destroy the mRNA of the nematode. So that's how it works, right? That's how it works. So basically for making that transgenic tobacco plant, right? The ne nematode specific genes, you can write down. So nematode specific genes, why am I using the word nematode specific genes? Means these are the genes which can form the mRNA complementary to the target mRNA of the nematode. Right. 
कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री टू द टारगेट एम आर एन ऑफ द नेमा डोट क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर बच्चे सो नेमाटोड स्पेसिफिक जीन्स दे विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू द दे विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू द टोबैको प्लांट बट हाउ विल इट बी डन बाय यूजिंग दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यू बाय यूजिंग एग्रो बैक्टीरियम वेक्टर सो नेमाटोड स्पेसिफिक जीन्स विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू द ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट हाउ बाय यूजिंग एग्रो बैक्टीरियम वेक्टर यू नो ना एग्रो बैक्टीरियम वेक्टर so using agrobacterium vector it will be introduced in tobacco plant it will be introduced in tobacco plant understood it will be introduced in tobacco plant then right so nematode specific genes using agrobacterium vector they will be introduced in tobacco they will be introduced into uh, tobacco plant so now there will be the production of both remember there will be the production of both sense and anti sense strand of rna sense and anti sense strand of rna understood yes or no understood and then basically when both the sense and anti sense strand you know na see this is this is your anti sense strand it is forming this rna but here both are transcribed right so you will get double stranded rna right you are getting double stranded rna so production of both sense and anti sense strand of rna will be there and then after that what is going to happen it is going to initiate rna interference right it is going to initiate rna interference please keep it in your mind this is important it is going to initiate rna interference and then there will be the silencing of specific mrna of nematode the target mrna of nematode right there will be the silencing of specific mrna of nematode understood bachche and then after that nematode removes away right oh sorry after that nematode moves away and finally it is the production of transgenic tobacco plant understood bachche finally there is the production of transgenic tobacco plant so that is important fine bachche oh not production protection of transgenic tobacco plant so uh, uh, it's protection so this is the process in detail and please make the flow chart kindly make the flow chart here okay please make the flow chart here okay sure sure so this is about the rna interference bachche this is about the rna interference do you know about flavor saver tomato do you know about another another example of uh, another example the flavor saver tomato do you know about it yes bachche what is that flavor saver tomato you know na it is the variety of tomato right bachche in which uh, basically what is there the ripening is de uh, delayed right ripening is de uh, delayed the shelf life is more you know about this tomato yes or no flavor saver tomato right in this tomato it is also genetically modified so the delayed ripening is there and because of that obviously shelf life is more 
राइट शेल्फ लाइफ इज मोर सो बच्चे हाउ दिस फ्लेवर सेवर टमेटो इज फॉर्म इट इज ऑल्सो फॉर्म बिकॉज ऑफ दिस आर एन ए इंटरफेरेंस ओके इट इज ऑल्सो फॉर्म बिकॉज ऑफ द आर एन ए इंटरफेरेंस एक्चुअली वॉट इज हैपनिंग बच्चे हियर इन फ्लेवर सेवर टमेटो एन एंजाइम पॉली गैलेक्टो यूरिनेज विच एंजाइम पॉली गैलेक्टो यूरिनेज वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द एंजाइम इट इज पॉली गैलेक्टो यूरिनेज this enzyme is inhibited it is blocked because this enzyme can degrade the pectin so it is polygalactouronase it is polygalactouronase what is the name of the enzyme are urinase nahi uronase polygalactouronase fine bachche so this enzyme is inhibited here and actually what is the role of this enzyme this polygalactouronase this enzyme basically degrade the pectin pectin present in cell wall na so it degrade that pectin and because of that obviously the ripening of that particular fruit will occur so if this in enzyme is inhibited the ripening is de uh, delayed so here also how that enzyme and its expression is inhibited with the help of rna interference clear bachche with the help of rna interference so so that's what you need to remember then bachche so polygalactouronase is blocked in flavor saver tomato fine it is blocked in flavor saver tomato so this these are the you know the applications applications of this biotechnology and one more example is there bachche right and that example is of your hirudin formation do you know what is hirudin yes do you know what is hirudin hirudin is natural anti blood coagulant it is natural anti blood coagulant it will not allow the blood to clot it will not allow the blood to clot what is it it is the hirudin so you know that in our body we have heparin right in our body we have heparin and hirudin is present in hirudin area do you know that hirudin area leach that leech is having the hirudin so basically bachche by using the biotechnology right art uh -oh. by using the biotechnology artificially artificially means in lab artificially hirudin gene is synthesized right artificially hirudin gene is formed and you know where is it introduced it is introduced in a plant your brassica nepus right it is introduced this gene is it is artificially synthesized it is very important this gene is not taken from this gene is not taken from hirudin area this gene is synthesized in the lab okay this gene is synthesized in the lab and then that gene is introduced in the brassica nepus so obviously the seeds will have this because this gene is introduced the gene will form protein the hirudin will be there in the seeds and that will be extracted from that seeds so basically you know uh, the patient which are having issues related to the blood clotting they can take it right and this is basically the molecular farming where we are using the natural organisms to get that product right like let's say if we have to synthesize it chemically this particular gene if we have to synthesize chemically it will take a lot of resources but now we are introducing it in a plant and its seeds are giving us that right and from that seeds we can extract it we can extract it so let's let's uh, revise it from the ncrt okay bachche let's revise it from the ncrt so see this pest resistant plant bachche so several nematode right right uh parasites of a wide variety of plant and animal so the example is meloidy gyne incognitia so it is important and how will right how will uh, yeah, this tobacco plant be protected with the help of rna interference that's what we have discussed now okay so rna interference takes place in all eukaryotic organism it's a method of cellular defense okay so here it involves the silencing of a specific mrna means targeted mrna and how are we doing it with the help of complementary double stranded rna we have discussed it right bachche we have discussed it so basically the source of this complementary rna it can be infection by virus having rna genomes or mobile genetic elements done bachche so this part we have already discussed and in a very simple way bachche with the help of flow chart i have explained you this okay i have explained you this so now in this chapter we are just left with your biotechnology 
in application oh sorry yes in medicine so these are the examples so this heriodin formation example is also important why this heriodin formation example it is also important right so it will be introduced in brassica nepus fine fine so bache can you tell me about the advantages and dis uh, and uh, disadvantages of this yep can you just tell me about the advantages and disadvantages of the biotechnology see obviously genetically modified plants they are better they are having better nutritional value they are having better pest resistance post harvest losses are less right farmers will be benefited but on another hand sometimes they are also you know allergic some people can be allergic to these genetically modified plants and moreover not just the allergic ethical issues are also there we are favoring certain particular we are favoring certain traits only right so we are somewhere playing with the nature that is also the ethical issue here and moreover you know the one disadvantage is like uh, i don't know whether you know about or not the concept of super weeds right sometimes let's say there is a there is a genetically modified plant let's say if in the nature right if in the wild if it will get hybridized with a weed it resulted in the formation of super weed and that weed is not controlled by any weedy side right that can be invasive so drawbacks are also there so that's your homework to read about the advantages and disadvantages of the genetically modified plants or the crops or the organisms so we just need one more lecture to finish it and we will start with the insulin part so insulin gene therapy biopiracy biopatent these are the topics that we need to cover and yeah certain examples from the animals as well so monday we are going to meet and monday we will be having the session on this particular topic so till then take care do let me know in the comment section bachche how was the session and which chapter you want to start next and moreover subscribe my profile on an academy platform students so that you will get the notification of my special classes okay just today we have covered the pituitary gland all the details of pituitary gland we have covered free of cost right so subscribe to my profile on an academy platform you can simply search ambika an academy you will get it so you have to follow that you will get all the details and if you want to enroll and yes this is the coupon code that you can use to even get enrolled in my classes so it is ambika 10 okay it is uh, uh, not visible it is ambika 10 done so take care bye bye thank you so much and yes happy diwali okay take care